my advice, it's things I've picked up over the years, you know, um, other things that you'll find from um, various other investors, but also from my perspective, having sat in the room. You know, advice for attracting investors. So sitting there looking for investors, typical scenario will be VCs. It would apply equally um, in large organizations, looking for funding for projects um, uh, you know, that, that, um, that have a similar sort of context. Most important thing top left is the people. I've spent every single time, what the investors are looking for is the individual that's standing in front of them. And they want them to be honest, experienced, have leadership qualities and passion around whatever it is that they're having, to, having pitched at them. Um, without that, nothing seems to go ahead. Okay, that's always where it falls down. Now the idea, obviously that's important. That, you know, the 10 second elevator pitch, you know, that, that great story, does that really come across? Um, why are you different? Why will you succeed? That needs to come through. And then the credibility is you know, crucial. You know, references, awards, sales, anything like that, absolutely valuable that makes the story. The reason there's a plus on the left and a minus on this side is that on the left-hand side, you know, great people with an idea that isn't so great, it's still okay. It, they will still back the great people with an okay idea because the idea can probably be changed. The bit that doesn't work is a great idea in the hands of idiots. Yeah. That never ever flies. Um, so it's got to be that side first, this side adaptable. Okay? And, and I say that, you know, it's not necessarily idiots. Overconfident people on the left hand side go into the same category. You know, difficult to work with people, same category. Um, and then underneath is pretty much a similar thing. So the business model. How are you going to make money? Um, you know, what's the upside? Is there some serious upside here? Hmm, that always goes down extremely well. Um, and how to change on the fly. Again, the adaptability. If we're right into this and things aren't going so well, what are the assets we really have that we can use in a different way that we're really happy that can go ahead? Again, those kind of you know, conversations that then start happening sideways around the investor's table, thinking, hmm, actually we could put that into another business we own. You know, those kind of conversations are great. Along the customer, so yeah, how you're offering matches market needs, you know, the, the very traditional things, the you know, the start practical, stay focused. You know, we are going to be the world's largest. You know, it's always a you know a tough one. Whereas we're starting really focused. This is how we're going to grow it out. Yes, it could be bigger and better. Is great, but starting too big and being dependent on that is not so great. Um, and that flexible and adaptive. And again, you know, a great business model. This is how we're going to make money or the rest of it. If you haven't quite defined the customer set right, that's okay. They can maybe think about it a different way, but great customer um, section, but with a rubbish business model that's never going to make money. It, again, it's never going to fly. So big ticks on the left are, you know, convey the passion. That's the, you know, people with the passion and the belief in there and not necessarily theirs, who the, those who are there just to make money. You know, that, that really put, puts a damper on things. Um, you know, have a plan that fits together. So as I put back at the beginning, the plan that fits together, you know, this is the whole thing. The market context, the products, the customers, the financial plan, and over this planned lifetime, that makes sense. And be coachable. You know, the, again, I said, you know, the arrogance, confidence, there's always a, a, you know, a difference. But yes, you have to be passionate. So it is a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a fine line. But it is very much a case of, of, you know, can the people who are investing work with you? You know, do you look like you're somebody they want to be working with? The comments I've seen that shoot great ideas down in flames, things like, we have no competition. Yet, <laughs> nobody like us. I've never really seen a business that doesn't have some competition. The competition is in the mind of the consumer and the buyer. And that, you know, I'll buy one of those, it doesn't do what this one does, but I quite like this and it's cheaper. You know, th th that kind of thing, you know, th th the comment around we have no competition, mm, yeah, don't like it. Um, if your numbers are wrong, you know, basic market facts and data and stats, uh, I've seen that too many times, you know, even the things on the screen that just don't add up, you know, and I don't mean rounding errors, I mean, you know, proper things where people are just sitting there and think, yeah, if they, uh, that doesn't convey the right level of confidence. Um, and, and pieces of the story that you don't understand, you know, so somebody starts saying, hang on a minute, that market there, you know, you said you knew it really well, Matt, you've never been there, have you? Mm. Nope. <laughs> You know, again, it, it just has to be believable. It's that, that honesty and the integrity that goes uh, back to the beginning as well. So those are my little tips.